Today on the Anime Zone are a review of the anime movie Summer Wars, an anime that explores the endless possibilities when it comes to our use of technology. I mean, think about it. In just a few years time, can you imagine what we can do with the kind of systems that will be in place? Welcome to the world of Oz, the online platform that allows you to control your life and everything around it in this digital world. Limitless possibilities are just a few clicks away at the touch of your fingertips. How may I serve you today? Porn. 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 Anal sex. What's a rim job? I only developed the thing. It isn't like I told it what to do. I'm sorry. I couldn't. What well, won't do you any good? You better work for an answer. Why is all this happening? The advent of social media has become a huge part of everyone's lives in recent years and is only growing in influence. You have Facebook, the place that proves that everyone has around 900 friends that they actually know about 1% of. Twitter, the place where you can see when someone has successfully picked their nose and would like to tell the whole world about it. YouTube, proving that television can successfully become obsolete using a combination of cats, fail videos and PewDiePie. Tumblr, a place for homoerotic fan fictions and Doctor Who gifts. And finally Reddit and 4chan, which I'm convinced are actually used by some of the world's most skilled and talented geniuses in the world who'd much rather spend their spare time making memes. So what happens if you put all social media into one place? Summer Wars! Kinda. Well, the, it's only really one part of the movie that's just like- SHUT UP! This opening paragraph is totally related to the movie, okay? In the near utopian future, where the online world has become this peaceful, friendly place, our lives have been integrated with the world of Oz. An online platform that is essentially an extension of yourself in the virtual world. Entire real world systems are reliant on Oz, and pretty much everyone uses it. So basically, it's an ultra advanced, happy go lucky version of the internet without trolls, cat videos, or porn. Probably. Back in the real world, Kenji Koiso is just your average teenager who's found himself in an odd predicament. Being the runner-up in the Math Olympics, he didn't have much planned this summer. But somehow, he's found his way travelling all the way to the countryside on an odd job set up by his high school crush, Natsuki. What he doesn't know is that the job entails a bit more than he first thought. The what? No, 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 absolutely not. Just pretend you're my boyfriend, okay? Can't do it. Kenji will make a wonderful addition to the family. While Kenji tries his best to fit in with Natsuki's large extended family, things get even worse when he receives a mysterious encoded text message which he manages to solve, not knowing that he's accidentally just released a dangerous virus onto Oz, known only as Love Machine. Shut up, it's a threatening name, alright? With Love Machine wreaking havoc within the world of Oz, the repercussions are slowly being felt within the real world, and as things get more and more chaotic and the stakes are raised even higher, Kenji and family slowly realise that this little piece of virus could pose a bigger threat to the world than anyone had previously imagined. This is your fault, honey. What's happening? I mean, this isn't real, right? It's just a game, isn't it? Now, anime original movies aren't something I normally do, but at the same time are often overlooked unless Miyazaki is making his next blatant message about war and nature, or when his name happens to rhyme with Shmashmira. But considering this is directed by my favourite up and coming director, Mamoru Soda, who did films such as The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, and more recently, Ame and Yuki Wolf Children, I wanted to shine some light on him. To get the technical aspects out of the way first, well, the movie looks great. Visually speaking, the animation is fluid and smooth, with barely any moments where anything is just still. They managed to make a stark contrast between the standard real world setting and the world of Oz, which is a bright and vibrant place that looks like what would happen if the internet had sex with Nintendo. Except I have no idea what the fuck this thing is here in the middle, considering it looks like a retarded cat going through an acid trip. On top of this, the soundtrack consists of orchestral music that feels very Disney-esque in the upbeat and comical moments, but still manages to hit home during the very emotional points and sounds... great. The acting in both sub and dub is also great, so uh... How can I put this into a nutshell? It's all fucking great! There, now with the boring stuff out of the way, let's get into the real meat of this review. The characters and plot. Characters were actually the weakest part, since with such an enormous cast, even the main characters, which were basically Kenji and Natsuki, get very little development. Kenji being the usual shy and quirky teenager living his average high school life of trying to get senpai to notice him, whose only standout trait being that he's really, really, really good at maths. Asians, eh? And Natsuki being the love interest who... 
you know what, has very little relevance to the story until the final climax. Then you have the rest of Natsuki's huge extended family, which probably have enough members to start a small nation. Individually, they don't get too much screen time, but special mention goes to the 90-year-old grandma of the family, aka Boss Grandma, who is the outright star of this movie. As head of the family, she looks over everyone with a kind heart, but also gains respect from all of them. I mean, just look at this clip here and tell me that it doesn't feel like a gangster interrogation. Kenji? Uh -huh. This great-granddaughter of mine is no pushover. Are you man enough to make my Natsuki happy? Is she about to huh? shoot him? Oh, uh, maybe? Shit, uh, well, wrong answer. I'm asking you if you're man enough. Uh, yeah. Oh man, this isn't sure? looking good for him. Yeah, I guess. Man enough to die for her. Oh I... fuck, he's dead! Yes. Just, just run now, run while you can. On a serious note though, she brings so much heart into this film. And honestly, while the characters may be the weakest part of the movie, that didn't bother me much. And I'll explain why a bit later. Now, it's hard to talk about the plot of the movie without spoiling too much, but to address the huge elephant in the room, yes, the plot of the movie is essentially a rehash of the Digimon movie, Our War Game, right down to the art style of the digital world. Not that it actually bothered me much, since both were made by the same director anyway, and as much as I liked Digimon as a kid, it's just fucking Digimon, guys, and this story was too great to be contained within that franchise. That's all I'll say on that matter, because if you have seen the Digimon movie, don't worry, because Summer Wars is done like a 10 jillion times better. Yes, that is a number I just made up on the spot. And if you haven't seen it, then even fucking better. The digital aspect of the film is an interesting look at the possible consequences as our lives get more and more integrated with technology, but it manages to do it without being too deep and complicated, since this is a family film after all. So they managed to keep things simple enough for even the kids to understand, though the technology in this film is sometimes simplified to a point that it makes very little sense. For example, I don't know why this kid is so good at fighting games just because he learns martial arts in real life. Because last time I checked, practicing karate does fuck all when you're trying to remember a 72 button combination to do a gay Yuken. And for the record, why is the computer virus called Love Machine? I mean, that name could mean anything from a really heavy womanizer to the world's most emotional vibrator. But it certainly doesn't sound like a scary computer virus that could possibly cripple the world. Technological simplifications aside though, the plot is fun and manages to keep you interested and entertained throughout. So fun, in fact, that you'll be cheering a climax based on a card game that apparently no one actually knows how to play. Will you declare Koi Koi? Koi Koi! Yeah, that's right, you Koi Koi, that motherfucker! Will you Koi Koi? I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Now, I have a confession to make. This is my favourite anime film of all time and something that I have a ridiculous amount of personal attachment to. But to properly explain why, I've got to go serious for a second and explain something about my own morals as a person rather than being that cheeky sarcastic twat on the internet. So if the thought of me being sincere for once sickens you, then I suggest you click off this video now or just grab a bucket. The technological aspects of the plot really only take up half the film. And the real reason why this is my favourite anime film of all time is because of the family which is what gives Summer Wars its heart and soul. The underlying morals the film portrays is the concept of family and how important it is. Family should be the people that always have your back, are always there whether you like it or not, and it's not just the family you're related to by blood. It's the family you adopt for yourself, the family you've been introduced into, and the friends you choose to introduce. It's an invisible bond that stays with you no matter how many members are in it, and something you should never turn your back on. Some members you may get along well with, some you may not, and others you may not know that well, but no matter what, you all share the bond of being in the same family, and it is one thing that no one should go without. This film portrays that so well, and with such a large cast you could argue that the characters were the weakest and least developed part, but that wasn't the point of it. The family itself felt like one massive character that was reminiscent of all those family reunions you'd used to have. The Thanksgiving meals and the Christmas dinners you'd have for your grandparents, the drunk uncles, the nosy aunts, the cousins you do or don't look forward to hanging out with, and the hyperactive kids. Every single member played a part into giving this family its own character, its own heart, its own soul. And that's what really makes the emotional moments hit home. As a family, you share each other's sufferings and each other's happiness. And you could feel the togetherness that everyone held towards each other, which is a concept I hold very close to myself personally. And that is why this came out to be my favourite anime film of all time.
Overall, Summer Wars is a bundle of fun that should not be missed by anyone. I'm not going to bullshit and say that I'm not slightly biased because of the values and morals that match up so closely to my own, which makes this my favourite anime film. But even without that, it's a highly entertaining look at how technology can affect us all, along with a heartfelt story that is friendly for the entire family. It's slightly cheesy and predictable at times, but who cares? You should be watching this anyway and you'll damn well walk out with a huge smile across your face. Currently, Summer Wars is licensed by Funimation and unfortunately is not available for legal streams. Streaming, but is available for DVD and Blu-ray, so get off your lazy asses and go get it. And while you're there, tell them Giguk sent you. Hey guys, Giguk here. I hope you enjoyed that review, and I hope you're enjoying YouTube Geek Week. At least I hope it's YouTube Geek Week right now, otherwise this is going to sound very stupid and random, but whatever. Before you go, I've got one quick announcement to make. I am going to be attending Alcon in Leicester from the 5th of September to the 8th of September. So, if you've ever wanted to see me in person, and I don't know, maybe hang out or some gay shit like that, then come hang out at Alcon with me. I'll make a proper announcement video later, but yeah, that's it for now. If you're new to my videos, then you can check some of my other reviews and shit here and if you like what you see why don't you just give me a subscribe and stuff I don't know and don't forget you can follow me on both Facebook and Twitter in the description below anyway that's it for now I've been Giga I hope you've enjoyed my review and I'll see you all next time